guys, it's Anisha Collins of Unashamed Imaging, and I'm here with another episode for AC's Corner. I received a question about how do I stay organized? How do I put all my footage and things together? People see me shooting all the time, and they're like, man, you just, and the fact that I'm solo, um, they ask all the time, how do you stay so organized? So I wanted to first credit that I used to be a nurse, and part of being a nurse was multitasking and organizing. I know you hear multiple things about can't multitask, there's no such thing as true multitasking. And while I partially agree with that, there's probably a better term for it, and it would probably be prioritizing. So coming up with a list, or at least in your head, knowing I need to do this, 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 and this first before whatever the end goal is. Everything leads to something, right? And so today I'm just gonna show you guys a quick way of how I stay organized um, when it comes to what I put, how I put stuff together. So I'm going to show you cinematography wise because if you know I do photography and cinematography and um, so I'm, I'm using weddings as an example. Um, so let's get started. I'm gonna share my screen with you guys. All right, <laughs> so you should be able to um, see me now. Sorry, I'm a little. Little Mariah Carey over here. So this right here is one of my uh, many US, um, USBs, many external hard drives. Um, I have a lot, I shoot a lot. Um, my camera is, um, files and raw files are very large, um, but I just overall, I shoot a lot. So the fact that I do photo and video, that alone just credits for why I have so many hard drives. Um, I have been condensing to uploading some things online, um, and so I'm very organized, and I, and I pride myself on that, and I'm not ashamed uh, to be organized. So this right here will just show you how I stay organized. Depending on what I'm doing, um, everything gets labeled. So if we were, I'm just going to go into a folder. Um, this is pretty much like what I shot in 2016 and some weddings that I've done. Um, remember, I do weddings and events, um, and I also work with small businesses. So my stuff is a mixture, but it, it's the way that I shoot, it's all, it all fits. It all fits together. So I'm going to show you guys. This is a wedding that I shot at um, the Ritz-Carlton in Ball Harbor. So everyone, let me just rephrase, everyone, or let me state at least, everyone has a different way of organizing. Um, if you look up Tyler Harrington, he has a really good way of that he organizes. It works for him. Everyone's system is different. All right, so what I'm showing you guys now is just um, my file names, like projects that I worked on. And I'm gonna show you this wedding that I shot in um, Daytona at the Crystal Ballroom on Sunset Harbor, really free menu. Um, but basically this is how I condense um, some of my stuff. Sometimes I'll have an image out front. I know this sounds weird. I do know my couples, but I also shoot a lot of people. So sometimes I'll leave an image out that my brain will immediately click, oh boom, that's where that wedding was. I'm sorry, I hope that clap wasn't too loud. <laughs> but that's where that wedding was, um, and that's the couple. Um, even though I have pretty good memory, look, I'm human, right? And so what I do is I separate my footage by how I'm using it. So my folder is by how, what I'm using and what's in it. So whatever music I'm using, it's a music folder, any photography. And remember, I do both photography and cinematography, cinematography, but for my DVDs that are digital, I need an image for the menu. So sometimes I take images for that reason. Um, it's also for marketing purposes when I want to talk about the wedding on social media. Still shots are great, but they're not as clear. Um, and so I like to take photography as well for that reason. And that's discussed with the photographer and with the couple, should it need to be, but it is discussed across the board. It just saves me drama. Um, and so I categorize everything. Now, a lot of times I like to place my drone footage by itself. Reason being, I know some people will say, why don't you just put that with video footage? But drone footage to me is never quote unquote primary. It's always considered B-roll. Um, and so I like to just have it in its own folder. Um, I have a final folder, which puts the final, whatever I'm cutting as the final, whatever it is. So for instance, I highlighted the belly dancer and I'll just, um, I'll just play so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Um, hopefully it'll open. Um, I highlighted the belly dancer. So 
because I highlighted her, I had a, a separate file for that. Uh, and then I have their, their teaser video, which is usually what I post on uh, Facebook. And I send to the couple for them to send to their family um, as their teaser. So I have a separate file for that. And then I have the actual final uh, video, depending on what collection they've chosen. Um, that will determine the length of the video. So I put, I put all my final products in a folder called Final. I mean, I'm, I'm very simple. I don't like to complicate stuff. And I would probably say I'm borderline or if not a minimalist. Um, and so I place all of that. Uh, when I'm doing my DVD covers, if they ordered a, ordered a DVD, I've kind of done away with DVDs because um, a lot of computers aren't coming with the DVD uh, slot or a, a CD slot, I should say. Um, even though I have one, I have an external drive that, that allows for that. Um, it's just not common, so I've kind of done away with those. Um, but because it is a final product, as a digital, I save um, the label that I'm making um, the DVD file on, and if you guys would really like that, I can throw that in my resource library, which you can purchase. Um, and then I also save the final DVD file. Um, from MediaZilla that I export, um, MediaZilla, that gets saved. So that's that's considered final as well. Um, now I had to redo this for um, a publication, so that's why that's out and it just really should be right there. See? Easy. It's easy to drag and drop and know where things go when you're organized. So that's, that's a, a big point that I want to address here in this video. So the next thing that I um, do is I go to my raw footage. And I categorize my raw footage by um, what I'm doing. Now, I know I'm going to back up for a second. I know people would probably asking why did I call this video versus raw? Great question. Reason? I have photography and video. If I put raw, raw what? Because I shoot raw as far as photo as well. So I, when I'm doing both or I have both and I know I have both, it's just simpler to separate it, photography and video. Let's say I got sick and I needed someone to edit this. And they're in here and, and I want to make it as simple as possible for them to go in here and find and find the footage that they need. So they're not going to open this folder because they know it's this photography. They're not going to find any video in there, right? So that's just a little um, tip for you guys. But hold on one second. Okay, so I then separate footage by what I've captured. Um, so I will put pre-ceremony and ceremony together, reception footage. Um, if there's any audio recording, um, and in this case, I had to use my iPhone that day. We just had some complications, not negative, just some things happened. It's always good to have a backup plan. Um, and so I have that in here, and then I have um, ceremony and post-ceremony. Now, in certain, some cases, depending on how much I'm shooting, sometimes I like to do this, and I'll, hopefully it'll move um, on its own. I like to chronological put things in chronological order so i'll change it to like a b c right um and what i do by what i mean by that is pre-ceremony ceremony um continuing with the ceremony post-ceremony reception and then this really would be audio um but that's a given i already explained and see that's why i don't like doing it because it, if i'm using the abc method it will move it to um the front and I don't really need that. Um, so I know what that is. I, I don't have to start, where is that audio? What did I do with it? It's boom, that the groom's recording is right there. That's um, what we had done day of. And so when you open the folders respectively, so I'm just going to jump into pre-ceremony, okay? I like to categorize yes, no. Now, this is going to be, this is by preference, of course, and the reason why I do that is because I have a style, I know what I want, I know what my couples have seen, what's on my website, and that's what I want to put into their final video. Some footage is just not usable. Like, if you think that everything you shoot day of a wedding is going to be used, I don't know where you're getting that from, but it's a little bit off. I'm, I don't want to attack anybody for being that carefree, but I doubt any filmmaker um, that I know, actually, I know for sure there are filmmakers that do not use every single piece of footage that they capture. Um, there's a filmmaker I know in Jersey um, who basically one day he posted, I forgot exactly how he said it, but it was to the extent of you need to, like, you you almost use at least 25% of what you shoot. So you need to be shooting, like, 
three times as much as what you would choose. So if you're shooting to just to break it down and to perform, if you have 100 clips total, you're probably only going to use 25 of them. If you have 200, you're probably only going to use 35 or 40. That's a, just an example of, it's not necessarily overshooting. Of course, they are, you want to shoot what you can and you want to shoot what your eye is attracted to and what you know you want to deliver for the final project because you're not going to come at it and that's the perfect time to get it. But you rarely use everything that you shoot. So for me, I start looking through footage two ways, okay? The first way that I do it is I like to look at all my footage. So before I get to this point, all the footage would just be dumped in this one folder because it's categorized, right? Then I start looking at footage and I start to, to, to decide, is this what I want in my video? So I was able to look at this and say, boom, this is, this is all I need to tell their story. And that's what I use to tell their story the way it fits my style and represents their day, those two aspects. This is all I need. Um, sometimes no footage will be repetitive shot. We're gonna use this shoe shot. Um, this is raw, so you're gonna see I'm also handheld, so it's not stabilized. It's you know it's smooth, just being handheld. But the whole point is, this is a shot that I wanted to have in the video. When you go to the no footage, you'll see that I have other shots of the shoe. Um, I don't even know. Um, there, I talk to myself sometimes when I'm shooting too, so you'll hear. Um, I could, you know, my focus could have been off. It, it may not have been complimentary. Um, there's many different reasons why I chose not to use any of these shots. Whereas, um, the other shot was just better for, for the film. So that's just to give you an example of how I deter determine yes or no. Also, you don't need every shot. Like I, I can't reiterate this enough or state this enough. You don't need every shot to tell the story. People know, for example, um, I'm trying to think of like without me even opening this like let's just look at this clip right here 20 21 53 without me even opening this to show you what's going on you can figure out her shoe is being put on right so you don't need to use every single clip that you capture to tell the story okay so i do that pretty much for um every part of the day every every part that i'm separating gets a yes or no folder um and it just helps me to just just really slim down and minimize and get to what i want and what i need okay so that's just showing you um how i categorize and then and then audio so this is just showing you guys uh cinematography uh the cinematography aspect of it now i'm going to show you photography so this is how i do weddings now if you blog or if you submit to blogs, I'm sharing a little secret with you guys. It's, it's a great idea to create a folder of your blog, of the images you're submitting to the blog. One, you don't have to go through your whole gallery of images. You just go straight to that folder and you look at what you sent. If you're writing a blog, in this case, I was writing a blog about this, um, wedding because it was a significant thing that happened during the ceremony. That blog is really good. You should go check it out. Um, it's called Brides You'll Never Walk Down the Aisle Again the Same Way. And so um, when, you're, when you're doing a blog or writing a blog, and some people may find this redundant, I don't. Um, create a separate folder that you have just those images in so you know what, what you use. It also prevents you from reusing the same images in a blog again because you kind of push them heavy already. So that's just uh, another piece of advice. So now remember when I was explaining to you guys why I don't use raw when I'm doing video, especially if I've taken photo and video the same day, not together, but I had an aspect of photography. So for um, when I'm just shooting them solo, I will use raw. So in this case, I had, I have two raw folders that have my raw images in them. If I'm using a second shooter, which for this wedding I did, I have one for them, one for me, and then I just leave it as that. I back it up um, so that should anything happen, I have it saved somewhere else, and then I start editing in Lightroom. That's a different video, but like I said, this is just how I organize folders. So in my final set, after everything is edited, I have my set, and then I have a client set. 
Um, these I use for blogs. If you sign up for my, um, I have a blog easier on my, it's on my blog and it's in my resource library. Um, you'll understand where, where these come into play. But what I basically do for the client set is very similar. Um, I label everything by what I'm using. If it's a no, it's a no. I will not release these. That is to protect my brand and my style. Trust me, if it's a no, you don't want to see it as a client. Um, so yeah, it's not, it's not getting out there. Um, so I create a folder and my folder also mirrors the gallery that I'm, that I'm sending to the couple. So if a bride was to come to me and say, um, it's an all black and white, right? And it's image number, um, I don't know, this one. What do we eat? 70, oh, I forgot I named it by um, their, their um, wedding date. So whatever the image number is, um, if it's that image number, then it's easy for me to find it. So I do all black and white, I do a getting ready folder, and, that, and then that even gets broken down into the bride getting ready and the groom getting ready and then the hotel, okay? And it's, it's just, it's obvious what's going to be within that folder. Just go, whoop, everything is bride getting ready. Um, groom getting ready, same thing. Um, hotel, I like to show where, where they were at and sometimes I'll send the images to the hotel. Um, sometimes they use them, sometimes they won't. I don't really stress about it. If it gets published, it's great. Um, the next thing that I'll do is bride and groom portraits. Now, you're probably wondering, I'm just gonna throw in another note, you're probably wondering why these have a Z next to them. What I do is as I'm loading the, um, images to their client's gallery, I put a Z so that I know it went through. I know it's just a check. It's it's nothing that makes the images better. It's just really just a check. Um, so once it's done, I will do what I'm doing now. And that's why I saved it so I can show you guys. Um, so everything goes once again in alphabetic order, easy to find. The only uh, folder that that keeps the Z is the no because I want that at the end and using the letter Z just puts it at the end Okay, so I show bride and groom portraits. There's a folder for that um, Ceremony, there's a folder for that. And sorry, I'm scrolling too fast. These are all ceremony images um, Cake decor details. There's a folder for that. So let's say the the um, venue calls you and says, hey, do you have any um, detail shots of the wedding we just did together? Sure, boom, got it right there. Um, getting ready, I already showed you guys. Reception, same thing, folder for that. Um, ring shots, folder for that. And um, wedding party family, folder for that. Everything is just has a folder, it's easy to find. Um, and then, like I said, the no folder. And I mirror this for the client's gallery. So nothing I do is, is redundant, meaning I'm doing it twice to, for the same thing. I'm doing it one time and then everything is cohesive. So I just wanted to show you guys how I organize my folders. I hope that helped you. I hope it wasn't too much information, but it gave you some inspiration um, on how you can organize your folders and take a, um, another approach, you know, if you don't have one. Uh, another person that I would like to uh, recommend to you guys, his name is Tyler Harrington. He, he has a, his own system as far as organizing his folders. So if mine may not work for you, try his out. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. And please keep submitting your questions. I love receiving them and I love answering them. Take care. Bye.